Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. In hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TG Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I need to have no more of these. Amen, amen. Gee. Oh. Uh, I kind of... <clears throat> Child... Hey, y'all. I know I've been kind of MIA. You guys and I have been super duper busy with this deep dive. But in the words of Cat Williams, honey, like I've been telling y'all, we are in the age of Aquarius, okay? And, you know, people are being exposed, especially Diddy. And so I've been busy working with this deep dive. Thank you guys all for the feedback on volume one. Um, oh my gosh, it's been a lot just putting this together. I'm glad we finally got a place to, you know, put it up at. Um, Vimeo is working with me until my website is done and my website probably won't be done until mid-March But I am almost done with volume two um, I just got to put a few finishing touches on the last chapter volume two is about three and a half hours long as well So hopefully I can have that up either sometime later on today or tomorrow So please be patient and then I'm you know chipping away at volume three as far as writing what I want to put into volume three So as I'm over here Okay, deep in this damn Diddy deep dive, I get breaking news that Diddy has not been sued, okay, by a male, a former male employee, and I'm not shocked at all. I knew eventually the men would be coming out the woodwork as well. So let me go ahead and read to you guys this article. So TMZ is reporting, Diddy has been sued by a man claiming the mogul sexually assaulted him. In legal documents obtained by TMZ, Rodney Jones, a former producer and videographer for the mogul, claims he was repeatedly sexually assaulted by Diddy and subjected to unwanted advances by associates of Diddy at his direction. Jones claims Diddy, among other things, would grope his genitals and <laughs> it's not funny and touch his anus. Not his butt cheeks, child, his anus. Jones goes on to allege Diddy would parade around naked in front of Jones. Jones believes Diddy was trying to groom him into having sex. He says Diddy would downplay the alleged assaults as horseplay. Jones goes on to allege that Diddy tried to force him to watch a video involving Stevie J having sex with another man. Jones includes a screen grab of the video. There are more allegations. He says a female cousin of Diddy's girlfriend, Young Miami, also sexually assaulted him, alleging attempting to have sex with him in front of Diddy and a member of his staff. And there's more. Jones says Diddy brought prostitutes to his house in Miami, and on one occasion, Jones says he was present at the house and was drugged and possibly raped. Then they show a picture of Diddy with an alleged underage girl, but there's red light, so we really can't tell. Then he also alleges at several parties, Diddy would intentionally serve women bottles of his tequila and vodka laced with drugs. Mmm. At the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they'd be, they'd be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they've been to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? There are more allegations, including bringing underage girls to Diddy's home and providing them with alcohol. Jones claims that Diddy directed Stevie J and his son Justin Combs to recruit prostitutes and in Justin's case he was instructed to find underage girls to attend the parties. Jones claims Diddy introduced him to Cuba Gooding Jr. on Diddy's yacht and Cuba allegedly began groping and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, and the small of his back and his buttocks and shoulders. There are also allegations of a shooting where Jones says Diddy and his son Justin got into a heated argument at an LA recording studio. Jones says gunfire erupted and the man named G was hit 
and was bleeding profusely in his stomach. Jones says Diddy told him to lie to the cops and say that G was shot in a drive-by. In addition to Diddy, Jones is suing Justin and other employees as well as various record execs. And according to the documents, he's seeking at least $30 million in damages, okay? So um, as of last night, a rep for Justin Combs told TMZ this. Justin Combs categorically denies these absurdities. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. This shit is so sick. When I tell you, I, I literally see this weird ass man in my dreams at this point. I, I just drove so deep into this fucking man. I just, I, I got to laugh to keep from crying because I'm thinking just all the shit he's done to people over the past 30 years. Um, so sorry. Uh, Justin Combs court categorically denies all these absurd allegations. They're lies. This is a clear example of a desperate person trying to take desperate measures in hope of a payday. There will be legal consequences for all of these <laughs> shit. For all of these defamatory statements made about the Combs family. Huh, interesting. Then Diddy's attorney, Sean Holly, tells TMZ this. Little Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events are more pure fiction and simply did not happen and is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. She adds, we have overwhelming indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney Tyrone Blackburn. Oh, not him again. As Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our call, we'll address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate actions against those who make them. So that is what Diddy's attorney is saying. When I tell y'all, the reason why these so-called outlandish allegations can even take flight is because of Diddy's reputation and the shit that he's done over the years. But with that being said, I'm my homegirl Kenya in Telegraph was able to get me some screenshots of um, really important things that were in the document. Um, she ended up reading the document. She got me some screenshots. So I'm going to go ahead and just read to you guys some of these screenshots from the lawsuit. All right, so as you guys can see, these are all the people that are being named in the lawsuit. Um, we have Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia Habitellarium, Lucian Charles Garange, Christina Core, Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jane Doe's, 1 through 10, ABC Corporation. So they have a whole list here. So he goes on to say this around line 18. Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create a, a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in the music industry. Throughout the duration of his career, Mr. Jones has worked with the South Side of Chicago music scene, playing with the following legendary greats, Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, the Clark Sisters, and Smokey Norfolk. On about August 2022, Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues item titled The Love Album, Off the Grid Love Album. Mr. Jones agreed, and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. From September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' Love Album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence, located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, New York, Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Throughout this time, Mr. Combs and Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. The claims raised in his complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video slash audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, his guests, engaging in serious illegal activity. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, 
GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, the display and distributions of unregistered illegal firearms. So it's very interesting that the drugs that he says that he saw, you know, Sean Puffy Combs have are some of the same drugs from Cassie's lawsuit as well. So keep that in mind. Then we go down to about line 29 and he talks about the shooting that took place. He says, on or about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writer's and producer's camp at Chalice Recording Studio on Highland Avenue in California. Present at the camp were Mr. Combs, his son Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30-year-old tall African-American male. In addition to these individuals and other musicians were present at the camp. The writer has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, J. Combs, and G were in a heated conversation that the conversation was moved out of the studio into the restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he'd be shot next. Mr. Jones generally believed that he'd be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom, and when the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs exited. G was laying on the floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach bleeding out of his leg slash hip area. Everyone stood around looking upon G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Jones dropped everything and ran to G and immediately began placing pressure on G's gunshot wound in his stomach. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area near his leg and hip. He decided to lift G and place him to sit on the toilet. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared into another part of the studio. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. The shooting of G and the subsequent silence of the LAPD in the media that Mr. Combs indeed had power to harm him. The LAPD spent hours in CRS after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the restroom, pictured above, yet no arrests were made. The morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at CRS, and G's blood was still on the floor of the restroom. Mr. Combs hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. Mr. Jones recalled seeing defendant Garange visiting Combs' home in Miami and in Los Angeles. Then around line 69, they go on to say this. Mr. Combs used to ask his Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration for Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. Mr. Jones went so far as to share a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom to ease Mr. Jones's anxiety concerning homosexuality. According to Mr. Combs, this is a normal practice in the music, in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper Redacted, R&B singer Redacted, and Stevie J. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys. Now here goes some video of Stevie J and Rodney Jones. Now gay rumors had been surrounding Stevie J forever. Remember when Roly on the Baddies reunion went in on Stevie and said that he was gay? Hey, bitch, you fucking gay dude, though. You fucking gay dude, though. You fucking gay dude, though. On top of this, a few years ago, I had did a video when Stevie J and um, Johnny Blaze were into it. And she and others accused Stevie J of going, you know, several different ways, being bisexual. And then um, the trans girl, Shauna, got Shauna Brooks, she got involved and she did this freestyle rap to the song Woe, which ironically enough is by Black Rob, who ironically enough was signed, was signed to Bad Boy. And a lot of people say that that was a song about Stevie J. So I don't know, honey, but here goes the clips. 
though. Now, I'm a power bottom nigga, that's for show. But if I'm giving over niggas, gotta have my dough. You fucking with my money, it's a motherfucking no. I'm only dealing with the niggas with that bank roll. So then around line 75, they say Mr. Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk to the restroom. While using the restroom, young Miami's cousin busts into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault Mr. Jones. As she entered the bathroom, she dropped her knees and began performing oral sex on Mr. Jones' exposed penis. Mr. Jones pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Young Miami's cousin did not accept Mr. Jones' rejection. As she proceeded to follow Mr. Jones out of the bathroom, she started undressing and attempted to straddle him and have sex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. This is crazy. Then he goes on to show a picture of them. And in this picture, it says, um, Mr. Jones and Mr. Combs on Thanksgiving Day, right before Mr. Combs invites Mrs. Jones invites Mr. Jones into the restroom and attempted to force him to take cocaine. Then there's a picture of young Miami and her female cousin who sexually assaulted Mr. Jones on Thanksgiving Day in 2020. Then around line um, 155, they say, according to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Jones display and distribute guns from his bedroom closet in Miami. Then they go on to say, Mr. Combs provided laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Coam KK, instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of the Cassie Ventura lawsuit. Young Miami's cousin and her assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. Rapper redacted. Rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht. Consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and R&B singer redacted. In Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting underage girls and sex workers. Now, what's very interesting about the Carisha situation, I believe that Carisha sent her cousin to do that. Because if you guys don't remember, and this tweet is still up, she might delete it after this, not that I give a fuck because we have the receipts. But remember when I had talked about it on my live stream a while back, when her and Gina Hun were into it, Diddy's Asian side chick, and she was in her feelings. And remember, this was on December 22nd, 2022, I believe. And Carisha said the following, if I wanted you to eat my pussy, Diddy would have had you on your knees, ho. You would eat her. So that doesn't sound like consent to me. That sounds like Diddy forcing somebody to eat you out if you wanted it and if he wanted it. Fuck if she wanted it. And so I wouldn't be shocked at all if Diddy sent her cousin to go into the bathroom after this man and perform fellatio on him, you know, and you know, that's the problem with young Miami. She runs her mouth too much. So I'm not saying that everything in this lawsuit is factual because I am side eyeing the lawyer, but the problem is that these lawsuits are going to grow legs because of Diddy's reputation. Diddy is trash. Let's just keep that real. And also, let's not forget, Misa was in her feelings after that car crash with Justin. And remember what Misa said? This was around June 6 of 2023, okay? Misa said, everyone has to sit around for years and act like there isn't anything wrong with you. This is where the buck stops for me, 100 the statement of fish rots from the head down means that in addition to being a major contributing factor in a family or organization's success, leadership is also the root cause of its failure and demise. The truth shall set you free. Then she says, I'm not protecting no one anymore, just my son, 100. So that said a lot without saying a lot. And it's very interesting. Now her own son is wrapped up in this lawsuit because again, Diddy has proven to not be a very good role model. You guys also heard me bring up Christian's name. So it seems like his name is also tied in here as well. So something is very dirty and has been dirty for years in the bad boys camp. But there is another thing that is floating around. And I do want to, you know, because I'm going to be fair, journalistic integrity. So... 
in one of the videos, he said that Diddy showed him um, Stevie J sleeping with another man. Well, it looks like some OnlyFans model has come out and he's saying that that was not Stevie J, but that it's him. So Glock Topics posted this and they're saying this. Um, Mr. Jones provided screen grabs in his lawsuit of what he says is Stevie J allegedly penetrating a Caucasian male. And you guys can see the screen grab. Well, this other guy says, that's not him. It's me. Y'all really be trying it. Then somebody says, the photo does look like you. These people are doing a bit much. Then he says, I know, and they will not bring him down off of my name. Try again. So I don't know who the knockout king is. I'm assuming he's some porn star, OnlyFans model. He's saying that that's him in the tape and not Stevie J. But again, I mean, it could possibly be him in that tape, right? But maybe Diddy used his tape because he looked similar to Stevie J to make it look like, look, look at Stevie J doing it on camera. So it's okay. So we don't really know the full extent, but I did want to bring that up as well because that's floating around social media that that video is not of Stevie J that's in the lawsuit. But it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out because something is definitely not clean in the buttermilk. And again, this is why my deep dive keeps getting longer and longer because more and more fuckery comes out about this man literally on a weekly basis. So with that being said, I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know how you guys feel about this situation. Are you guys buying this new lawsuit? Do you feel like this guy's just, you know, trying to jump on the bandwagon and get a check? Or do you feel like where there's smoke, there's fire? You know, so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Leave a comment down below. Please like the video. Don't forget to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.